rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Boss? Present. Pippia? Graham? Yes. Hughes? Present. Fry? Present. Schroller? Here. Throm? Present. Barnes? Okay. Six. All right. Um, the first item is the approval of minutes. Darlene had some minutes and um, and corrections, and I had some corrections and the spelling and the typo things. Cindy took care of just some misspellings. Um, but there's two changes that we will make, or hopefully make, on uh, page two under business and discussion items on the purchase of flags. The sentence that says this project has begun by the citizen group is going to be changed that these citizens initiated the bridge flag project, just to make it a little bit clearer. And then on notices, the very next page, page three of the agenda, where it says the very last line of notices and hearing, the Planning and Zoning Commission will review the comprehensive plan. and then uh, during their monthly meetings. So, so uh, they are going to continue on doing that. So those are the only two changes I, that Darlene and I had combined other than some little typos and stuff. Is there any other changes? I would entertain a motion to approve as amended. Move to approve the regular minutes of February 11, 2019 with such changes. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Now it's 7-0. Jason is now here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Public comments. Public comments is anyone who is not on the agenda that would like to share. Give your name, your address, and your word. I don't see anybody out there that wants to come forward, so we'll move along to <laughs> business and discussion items. Uh, Michelle, would you like to share? Good evening. I'm Michelle Weitzel here representing Marysville Main Street. Um, I believe in your packet you should have our um, requests for the Mother's Day market and the Big Blue River Days. Um, we don't have, um, I'll start first with the Mother's Day market. Um, we don't have really any additional requests for the city, but I will uh, give you an update on some plans that we have. Um, we are working with um, the library and MCAC once again this year to bring a children's performance. It was very, very well received last year. We had probably one of the biggest crowds we've had in the market of recent years. Um, so we're trying to build on that family-friendly environment. Um, we are working with the local FFA for a fundraiser for them to have some sort of petting zoo. We already have um, pony rides, so something um, uh, fun and, and would give back to that organization in our community. Um, we are working on um, creating kind of a, I guess I'll call it a fine art tent. Um, we have some people that have said um, uh, that they um, would like a covered type space um, more secure maybe for um, some finer art type things that you might find um, at some of the larger uh, festivals in larger communities. So we're working um, through that. Um, let's see, what else? Like I said, all the rest of the um, things regarding um, the barbecue tent, same location, all of those types of things. Um, uh, we certainly appreciate um, Main Street's partnership with the city on this every year and working towards um, the, the money going to obviously the Kester House um, um, position, I guess you would say. So I would entertain any questions regarding the Mother's Day market. Or so are you getting that trout fishing? We are. I have, did you look cute. them up? No, but I, I think I've seen them on TV somewhere. Yeah, yeah. The MCAC and the library just picked the best, you know, family-friendly groups. And like I said, String Beans last year was an overwhelming hit. Felt like everybody went to the Mother's Day Dash run, and, and then they all just came down, and there were just so many families there. Um, I mean, besides the being very hot, 
um, which we really can't do anything about it. I was just going to say the tent was the big, or no cover was the big thing yeah. last year. We're going to try to have pop-ups for them. Um, we're trying to work on that for regarding like a stage, but we're kind of limited um, <clears throat> with that. So you're just going to advertise for everybody to bring their own shade if it's hot? Oh, I'm meaning for the band. Yeah, yeah. if you're a visitor, you're just going to have <laughs> yeah. to power through. <laughs> because I remember that. Go take a break and have That was the only negative I think I heard about yeah. string beans, that it was extremely hot. It was so. a very hot day that day. If you remember right, it was kind of rainy in the morning. It got very muggy mm -hmm. this last year. So we're really excited. We have a great committee, um, an expanded committee versus in previous years, just a couple of us working on it. So me personally, I um, appreciate the help and the workload and everything like that and the the creation of new ideas for the event. I'm really, really excited about it. So. I, I asked Cindy to pull the number of man hours. Did you get that done? I did, and it's in your folder. It's actually <laughs> about 60 of I was our just, hours. That's what I was just going to say. And it's you, a few, you, It's and I think it, it was either 66 for that one and 60 for the barbecue or vice versa. Okay. And there's like 23 or more hours of overtime that goes with the Mother's Day market because you require us to be down there in the park right. that whole time. We are not running overtime hours so much, but it takes, I don't know, 30, 40 hours to put the tent up and down by the time you add all our people together. And, oh, I was going to say all the people together, it, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it takes they've got it five guys from the park, now. and they yeah. got, it takes five guys from the street, and it takes all, probably 40 hours yeah. all together to put that thing up and take it down. Right. So the city d is contributing that to the event, that's what you're saying? Right. Yes, the the, the barbecue and the car show, for those maybe that are newer to the council, I think this was on there last time, the barbecue and the car show bought that tent. Oh, it's been maybe four or five years ago and instead of the market renting it the city puts it up both times and that way we don't have to pay it's like 800 to a thousand dollars for a tent I mean it's ridiculous so we've confirmed the Van Lanninghams we're excited about chicken barbecue yeah the only thing about the chicken I noticed that I um we always have leftover chicken. Yeah, are you gonna, cutting back? Yeah, we are. We're just going to do 850 this year. I think There's, that's we a great can't idea. Fit a thousand. We served right at 800 last year, I think. We're going to start trying to. One thing we talked about is trying to like tell the um, the local churches in their bulletins like bring your mom down for that day. We're going to try to do some more of that. But well, they used to run out. I remember we back did. when I used to travel to Marysville. Did we, what happened this last year? Why? Because there was something happened at the time. They, it didn't. It wasn't ready on time. They was that it or something? Yeah. So then people got We've tired of waiting in line. That. They, yeah, they walked away from, uh, from there the, a the scene, of, really, last right, year, and right. a smoker went down, and so we were backed up. It was probably one of the worst. I was going to um, say, because so normally we, they sell We've more. appointed, um, actually, Brian Froggle offered to be the liaison for Van Lanninghams that whole morning to make sure that somebody, I keep, I'm going to hit that, somebody remains there because that really put us back, like, 20 or 30 minutes and it's okay. I don't want to make anybody people don't wait. want to wait that long no and when it's no. hot and they've got okay. hungry little kids I just family. noticed each year you know it looks like we 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 had based on the revenues and the number of ch chickens bought there was about yeah, 200 going, extra so that sounds great yep yeah, we're going down and I will send out bids actually next week for that um you know to our local places that provide the chicken and the coleslaw and stuff so okay yeah any other questions on the market Move to approve Marysville Main Street's request for the Mother's Day market. Is there a second? Second. Any dis further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7 0. All right. Uh, for the Big Blue River Days this year, um, we, like I said, have the same kind of request and everything of the city. Um, the only, um, I guess, additions or changes, we're, try we're working really hard, you know, we get so many people into town on Saturday and the car show gets over and they are gone. So we, um, we <coughs> continued the last, I think this will be our third year of having a band and things like that, but we had two um, kind of concerns that people said, number one, all the food vendors leave and the wagon wheels always packed and I'm sure Empty Cup is as well, that they wanted some sort of food vendor down there that evening. Um, which we're working on a, with a local business that's not downtown. So it might get them some um, revenue from the weekend. And then we're also sponsoring a cornhole tournament. I saw that. Um, just maybe to attract a different crowd. I mean, I think we always think, gosh, so many people are at the dance recital. That's a great event for the weekend. But not everybody's down there, and not everybody is a car <coughs> person that's been there all day long. So we're hoping to attract a new crowd. Um, Washington has done this, and Jessica Lee is on our committee, and it's just like 
run with it and got registrations. It's apparently these are sanctioned events. Like you can watch Cornhole on like ESPN three or something. So we're pretty excited about so it. So this is our first attempt. Yes. Yeah. yes. All right. It, it will be within a street that's already blocked off, so we won't be. So are you, you know, going to do it along Seventh Street? We're going to actually no. It'll have to be like where cars were previously. On so the it'll be Kind of in front of my office, in front of where um, like Boss Motors and everything is, and okay. we're limiting it to. 25 teams or something like that okay. so it's not going to be a big thing but we hope it will eventually be a big thing cool. um, and then the only other and it's not really a change but with the change in the the liquor law I'm going to work closely with Cindy to figure out uh, last year we had like beer and wine and we want to just do the same thing but uh, the licensing I'm assuming is going to change with the new liquor laws that go in effect April 1st we're not serving liquor I don't want that to, to we, seem like that we but we changed our CMB to right, include to six percent yeah because yeah. because that's they're like Austin told me the other day they're just not three two beers not going to be a thing so um, that's not really a change so but just to let you know okay. I'll work with Cindy mm -hmm. to make sure we get the appropriate paperwork filled out for okay that, so and then uh, so boss motors uh, what? Might not necessarily be available. Yeah, are you? Um... Uh, we. I have been working very closely with Greg, and at this time, he said there should be. There's not a concern that it won't be available at this time, um, but um, he there's said no guarantee. there is no guarantee. There's but no we are guarantee. working very closely with him. So, do you have an alternate spot in case they would? <laughs> uh, it just affects barbecue teams, not cars. Um, so we are just keeping that in in mind as we accept barbecue teams. We're not uh, near that capacity yet. Well, it, so. it would affect. Um, don't they do the registration right there at that tent? Yeah, but that that's technically the, the city cars. owns like that drive and everything right there. So on the east side of your office, mm -hmm. we own uh, a portion of it. Yeah, and from what I understand, but I thought just the drive. Yeah, I thought Boss Motors ever said their trucks right there. They do, well, but there's on, a space yes. between there's the space. drive. Yeah. So Marysville owns a little space. They own a little, like a driveway. Driveway. A little driveway, oh. which we certainly overlap a little bit. But like I said, I, I have, uh, Greg reviewed this with me. Okay. Um, at this time, doesn't see that there'll be any sort of problem, and we will adapt as needed. Perfect. So, <laughs> so Michelle, how does the parking work there for the nutrition site on Friday? Here, this <coughs> first one for the barbecue, we asked to close the rail bed and the, that Park. first item. How does... It affects their parking. Uh, we have worked closely with Patrick in the past, which will be Ashley now, um, and we've even offered, um, you know, to provide some kind of shuttley type service if they could park at an alternate location to bring them. And um, will they be able to park in that lot just south of Helpering, no. or you use that Wait. as well? So no, it has, I no. it has everything to closed. the west. The west is what we take, and we've done it every year, and we always communicate that to them. But the parking, early. we've never had any issues. You yeah. know, there's those garages, and then there's some parking. I don't know. Do we I, fill? Do you fill that up? You have yeah. south of the Helvering Center. You have both of them. Yeah, yeah and I don't know. It, it, it kind of depends. Some teams depends when the teams come in, but certainly by Friday. Um, afternoon it is completely full mm -hmm. so like I said we will um, I've actually have we actually uh, when she took over down there asked me the dates and everything so we're in communication with her okay, okay. so because I was gonna say that that's usually all full so I know we always encourage we hope them. It's well, a couple of years ago, they served fried chicken or something, which is apparently like a really exciting yeah. thing. And we were like, don't serve the best meal <laughs> ever <laughs> on Friday. Serve so liver weekend. and onions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, serve something that's not well. Yeah, loved. fried chickens are best. I know that. That comes out thing. bad. I apologize. I thought that you did allow at least um, <coughs> being able to get through the Helfring Center and go to the alley. I, I think that it's blocked. I apologize, Darlene. I don't have my map with me. You mean I on the back like side of the blocked. building, on the east on the side, west, on, the west on the west side, side of the building, and then at least allowing um, some parking there next to the building where the handicapped then, is, and then uh, people could exit to the to the east during. I th I think down the people. The alley. Sorry. I think the people that work at the Helvering, because the bus still has to be able to go through right there, but it, it's. We don't want them back in that parking lot because we already have teams that certainly, I mean, this says Thursday at 5 by Thursday? Friday morning. Oh, yeah, okay. it's Thursday, but we, it does affect it on Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then the swimming pool passes. Now, how did the, how did the, you 
Do you give them passes to go to the swimming pool then? Yeah, like every barbecue team gets two and then every car show participant gets one. This is a, something that started be long before me. I don't know if you have statistics on who goes. I mean, the barbecue teams, my guess is they don't go because they don't leave their... They don't ever leave their sight. But they bring their They're, kids. Well, but a lot of them, their kids help them. So I, I can't comment on the car show, how well, many people I don't use think them. The car show. I don't think a lot of them get used. Okay. I was going to say, otherwise we could just open the pool for... Yeah, I, I don't know. That it would certainly be up to you deal. all. It isn't a lot. It's, it's not a lot. Yeah, I, was gonna say, I can't keep, imagine. So you do give them passes so they know who's yeah. using yeah, it. Yeah, and it's do. for that day. Yeah. Well, yeah. I realize that. I don't mind that, but I just thought if it's right. a problem, just open the pool and have it open it's for everybody. We've never had that many that it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess. You okay. see some of them go, yeah. It's probably yeah. The, the biggest descent is probably the cost. I just wondered how you kept track of it. I just wondered how you kept track of it. Yeah. That's all I wondered. They bring the pass to the pool, and the pool writes it down as a free pass. At the pool, but it specifically says for that date. Yes, for yes, that day. it has it has the date and the year, so it's not something that can be replicated okay. or anything like that. All right, so. no problem. Yeah, and like I said, Main Street certainly appreciates um, your part in the car show. I, I shouldn't be just speaking on behalf of that. I'm here representing Main Street, the barbecue committee, and the car show, car club. So no, that's that's fine. I think that's great. Yeah. So no problem. So I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we. Uh, this is just for the uh, car show, the Blue River Days. Yep. Mm -hmm. That we um, do whatever Michelle needs. So, except the as she presented, request as presented. Yeah, request as presented. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Seven zero. Oh. All right. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. The next item is Lynn Bargman, who is here. We're so glad you're here, Lynn. <laughs> yes, I'm Lynn Bargman. Our family does uh, pumpkins and more. I've been doing it for nine years at uh, Hedgeson Hall and was requesting again for this year. It was available. Well, I think it's great that you have this to bring people to Marysville and have them hang out a while. So. Yeah, we Last year we had a lot of out of town people would stop and purchase cool. pumpkins and stuff. I know when we were doing that uh, geometric improvement, that probably hindered you because it did a little, but yeah. they still people from Fairbury found us. So good, Waterville, good. Frankfort. So good, Florida. good. And you pay a, just twenty five dollars a year $25. to pay for the electricity. Yeah. And you know our men moved the equipment out and stuff like that, so that's our contribution to the project. But I think it's a great thing to have in Marysville. With that being said, move to approve Lynn's request for Edstrom Hall. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, Lynn, thank aye. you for doing you. that. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. All right, Chief, you're up. Congratulations to the wrestling team. Long you, weekend. Yeah, your son did well. He, he meddled. Did, did well. Praise hey, the Lord. Both my sons have meddled the state. I never even made the state. You're uh, <laughs> ten times the athlete I ever was. So are you, you, you giving the it's credit to Coach Fredrickson on that? <laughs> yeah, or? I did. You know, we talked about that the other night, that there was a bunch of us fathers that started those kids out when they were four years old. But we handed them off to Coach Fred, and he took it to a whole new level. Yeah. And he truly has. And, That's right. Uh, them working together, he's taught them leadership, he's taught them a lot of things. I've heard really good things about him, yeah, so that's thanks. great. Uh, what All I right. have for you tonight is, this is the grant that I sent out to you that we received from the Edward Byrne JAG grant. Uh, it's a 100% grant. This is the one that we're going to transfer our radios over from a single VHF radio to a tri-band radio. We'll be able to still talk to the city and the county on 800, the city on VHF, and the school district on UHF, all on the same radio. All of my guys most of the time carry two radios on their bodies, and Dave, when he has a school radio with him, is carrying three. So we're eliminating all that, plus we're putting a new base station and everything in uh, for Ruth at the office as well. You see the bids in there. We do not have a local radio station, a radio supplier, but the major suppliers we have, one is Motorola out of Topeka, it's TFM Communications, and they had a bid of 52,88.90. Now, KCOM, you see their bids broken into two pieces. That's because the base station is a separate bid other than the handheld radios. That's the 55.57? That's the base station there? Yes. 
Yeah, okay. forty thousand seventy-five dollars are the ten or the other ten radios, and then the single fifty-five fifty-seven is the base station with antenna on top of the building and everything. Okay. Now you know over on the, we have two antennas over on the building now. One of them is her BHF. We'll have it moved to the south side of the building, and there is an eight hundred there now that was put there during the jailbreak when we had to have dispatch down there for almost a month I think it was. Mm -hmm. They let us keep that antenna so we're going to permanently mount it where it needs to go that way if anything ever happens again they will come into that same desk all the radios computer all the hookups are already still there and we won't have to have call a radio company in at midnight to do everything again like we did this time. But all this will be covered in, the, in this. So. Um, I would, I would suggest that we go with the low bid with KCOM for the Harris radio. Both of them are comparable radios. We looked at another company called, uh, it's by Kenwood, it's EF Johnson slash Kenwood now. They do not make a tri-band radio. So, and they are what is sold over how communications in Seneca. So we did not do those. And I, and I spoke to them several times and they passed on the bid. Um, KCOM with Harris. They both can be submerged in water, so when officers are standing out in the rain, it will not affect the radio. And also the microphones have noise canceling. They could be standing next to a, an engine down the rail yards or a fire truck, and they can still talk on it because the microphone uh, cancels out the noise when you're trying to talk, the background noise. I need that on my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. Well, each of these mics, as you can tell, are several hundred dollars. So. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Um, and the one thing about Harris, they have a... a trade-in that um, Motorola does not. All I have to do is trade in 10 handhelds and a mobile that don't even work. As long as they have a serial number and a charger, they'll take them back. And you can Get see the experience. discount there. We're going to save almost $6,000 by doing that. So I've already talked to the other agencies in the city. We're going to put a package together, send it down, and save us another six grand to either we can have, make sure all the installation costs are passed or paid for, or maybe we can get us uh, an extra radio to have on hand in case one breaks down or something. So, I, this, this, we, I didn't even know if Harris had that until Riley County actually called me when I was asking who all had Harris. Riley County all runs all Harris, and uh, so does Walmigo PD. And they, they love them. They love good radio as well. I know you said that both of them have a three-year warranty package. I see it where it is on the Motorola, but it's on KCOM. I just can't see it. He told me that's standard with all the radios. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And KCOM is also the company that sets up all of our vehicles as well. We I move that we go with KCOM. It looks like around $45,632 less the trade-in discount. No, that, that is, is what the trade-in is. That's, that's what that the trade-in yeah. Trade okay. yeah, they were really close if I didn't take that off. Okay. They were within, I think, $1,000. Okay, is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Mm, I'd like to ask a question. Sure. Sure. To the city, I know this is a grant and everything. Uh, what's going to be the cost to the city here when Zero. it's all done? No, that's why I said it's a hundred percent grant. There is no cost to the city. Even installation and no, the installation area. of these radios is already in that in the bid. You can see the installation of the antenna. Now, if they move other antennas, he said we'll move them because we're going to be up there anyway. But there's extra money here in case we need it. We actually, because of the trade-ins, we have more money than we actually need right now but we will use it to make sure the system is right. But it, there is zero cost to the city. That's, that's music to our ears. But this is the same grant that we applied <laughs> all of our body cameras that the officers have. Uh, they were 100% grant as well. It's the same grant. We just happened to apply for it again. So was that like three years ago? Nice. Yes, because last year, remember, we applied for the radios and they locked down the grant because of the Sanctuary City lawsuit. That's why we automatically received it this year. Okay. Because we already pre for it. Any other questions for Chief? So we have a motion, a second to approve KCOM, which is the Harris radios. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Seven said Within about three weeks turnaround, we'll have the radio system here. All right, cool. cool. Thank Thanks, you. Chief. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next item is the uh, Convention Tourism Wage Contract for Michelle Weitzel. And we did have a finance and admin committee meeting this, this right before this meeting to discuss it. Yes, uh, mayor, um, the mayor was there. Austin came in late. Um, Diane and Terry and myself were there. 
and um, we we looked at um, what was proposed but we have a concern with with the amount that um, that was was proposed um, our our rec um, currently with our rec contract uh, we are giving them one thousand dollars a year raise I think there was like a three year uh, contract that we we've given them um, our employees we gave a 40 cent per hour raise and our committee uh, settled on a seven hundred and fifty dollar raise that we would like to propose for Michelle and that would be almost um, 60 cents per hour increase something like 58 something because based on 1300 hours she's um, supposedly works about 25 hours per week of course it doesn't you know some weeks a lot more probably some less I make a motion that we vote this up $750 annual raise for Michelle. So are you approving the contract? The in contract, total, yep. But the only change being the compensation to 20000 20750 Okay. That was your motion? Yes. Is there a second? second? Okay. Is there any further discussion? Was there any communication about this before the, this came out I mean has this been talked about in the years past them increasing this year over year this contract or it's you know? only that this will only be the beginning this of the third year third so the year. first year she I wouldn't have got anything anyway so she's only been here one year without a raise this is the beginning of the second this is the beginning of the third year right but I yeah. mean one year would have been the first negotiated 20 2017 was when she came on board and then that so there's 2018 was her second year Right, so that year was with that. I, I did point out uh, that in the job description that is on page 30, it says the maximum per year is 22000 And that's in the job description, so. All right. Well, if there's no further questions, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Six, one. All right. Moving along to, I'm not aware of any notices or hearings. So we'll move along to the consent agenda. I'd like to discuss the two airport leases real quick so we can go ahead and approve three and four and then go back to the leases if that's all right with you guys. Move to approve consent agenda item number three and number four. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0. Okay. So the airport leases, the information uh, that's laying at your desk, Austin provided. He said that it was supposed to be in there, but it, but it didn't. Just to show you the different bids that were given. So I just wanted to see what they were, their ranges and stuff. But the other thing I wanted to ask a couple questions on is the contract, uh, the lease agreement. Is this the same lease agreement that we've had in the past? One that you just approved at the meeting in front of this one. I brought it to you. You approved these at this that meeting and told me to add that paragraph 13. I, we brought the contract to you to approve before we ever took it out to bid. Well, let me, so I don't understand that on the, in section two, it says, um, the fourth line, it says, leaseholder reserves a right to terminate the lease early upon 60 days written notice, notice. And then this is a part I don't understand. In event, the parties cannot agree upon the annual rent adjustment as described below. But our rent is fixed. Yeah, it is now. So that probably, I mean, that... You so, didn't, so we didn't talk about that at the last one, so we did Because the previous it. contract was a, a market it, rate. It, so because of that. them working on the yeah. thing. So, okay, yeah. so yeah, let's pull up, let's say, written notice in the event. Notice in the event the acreage is needed. You need that part in there, right? Mm, let's see. Where 
So we just want to pull the first in event the parties cannot agree on the annual rent adjustment. Yeah, because and then that the, doesn't belong. And then the second question I had was, um, I guess it would be just the next. The first I know. Came through. In the, in the, it says in the event leaser gives 60 days notice of termination, the lease he shall have as his remedy the reimbursement of annual rent for the year in which the lease was terminated. Okay. And if cons conservation work has been completed, the leaser will reimburse the lease the depreciated map, but not to exceed 50% of the original cost. What that's, what that's indicating is that if for some reason this renter doesn't want to do this anymore and he's done some terracing something that we ask him to do conservation work we would reimburse him for that but on number that nine on the second sentence on number nine yeah it says except as provided above in paragraph two the cost necessary for completing any conservation work and such other improvements including machine hire shall be borne solely by the leasee so why would we ever because it well if he terminated if we terminated him I think that's, isn't that what it's trying to tell us? In the event in the that the event lease, lease or, or. we would terminate him and he's already paid for conservation work, we would reimburse him for what he had done. Even though he's paying for all the conservation work? He's paying for it, but if we, we go to him and say, okay, you're out because we're going to do the, we're going to fix the event, a... In the the uh, lease or gives 60 days. The, the lease or is us. Right, the lease so, so, it, so we say, okay, all of a sudden we're going to, we're going to change the airport. And you have to not farm this. Okay, I'm okay with that. that that's that's why it's in case he's paid to have something done, some terracing or something, and, and then we terminate. And the then lease. we terminate his agreement, saying, "Okay, now we want the land, and it doesn't matter what you've done." Okay, so that was the okay. only other change. Yeah, that other one. So just the out. one change we'll pull, and then on the other agreement. Um, does it say this? It right? also says the same thing in number two. It okay, says so lease or reserves a right to terminate the lease early upon 60 days written notice in the event the parties cannot agree on the annual rent adjustment. Yeah, because that shouldn't be there. Yeah, it should not be there. Okay, so we're going to pull that. Cannot agree yeah, in, the that, event, yeah, in the event. In the event the parties cannot agree on the, the annual rent adjustment. Okay, so we'll pull that. Okay. And. It's a set amount. I don't see this. And number two. So is it and is it's number nine okay. weird too? What is there? No, that was the same. You didn't change number nine. Okay. Yeah, because it didn't talk about terracing. Okay. okay. So those are my those just that slight change in both of those leases. Otherwise, um, the high bid obviously is in here at 128 per acre for the farm ground, and I assume the 51. 51. 51. It, one by fifty one cents. Fifty one fifty one. Okay. We'll so I um, am okay with them other than that slight change in the lease agreement. Those are per acre. Yes. yes. Does it not say per acre? Yeah, it does yeah. per acre there. Per acre, yeah. So I would entertain a motion with that slight change to approve the lease agreements for the hay ground and the crop ground. Move to approve the airport lease on the farm ground as amended. Move to approve. Well, go ahead. Okay, so you're doing the crop crop land crop first. first. Is yeah. there a second? Second. With, at the um, one twenty eight an acre, right? Yep. Okay. There was a second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? You did make that as amended, right? Yes. yes. Okay, now do the second move, one. Move to approve the airport lease on the hay ground as amended. It's a high bid of 51.51. Thank you, Kevin. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Seven. Oh, all right. Very good. Got this done. Okay. The next item is the appropriations ordinance. Move to approve appropriations ordinance 3693. I'll second it. Is there any discussion? Well, I might mention some of the larger items. Um, $72,086 transfer per uh, budget, payroll of 39700 and then uh, the Breeding Heights loan payment of $24,690. All right. Thanks for pointing those out. 
transfer payroll and a long-term debt payment. All right. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Boss? Yes. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Fry? Yes. Schroeder? Yes. From? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Seven. Seven. All right. Moving along to staff reports. Austin? <coughs> All right. Uh, first one up is the water tower inspections. Uh, went out to bid. Uh, got three uh, uh, bidders to to work with us. Um, McGuire Iron, uh, Suez, and, and Viking. Uh, each of them turned in bids. One did a combined bid, uh, just for a one off price for all the tanks, and it didn't matter because we need to inspect them all. Um, and Suez came in at lowest for $3,190 uh, to inspect uh, all three, uh, the two water towers and tension tank uh, using a remote operated vehicle on the inside and doing uh, inspections on the outside but, uh, and, and the interior of the water tower, uh, the sphere tank. Um, so it's uh, something to get us up to date and we'll do this uh, every two years. So, uh, Have you heard anything on this company? No, uh, they're uh, Formally, they bought utility services. Okay. Uh, we've uh, used so them. The, yeah, they're okay. they're pretty. I did. They're a nationwide seen, company. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, I just put Suez in there because um, that's. Well, I know that was on their head. <laughs> I think we did. We did use them for some of the major yes, work yeah. on yes, yes, that done 17th it. tower. So. Yep. That's, that's good to are. know. Thank yeah. you for throwing yeah. that in. Just, just curious. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And they, they can do that this year. We uh, approved low bid to Suez for the water inspection. For thirty-one ninety. For thirty-one ninety. Is there second. a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Seven zero. Oh. So, just when you go out to bid like this, do you seek them out to bid on this? I do. I. Ha I mean, I've had people stop by and and. Well, and this is really good job because one was twice this. Right. So whatever you did. <laughs> I actually, to, to tell you the truth, they submitted a bid before. I told them we were in, wanting to inspect, so they submitted a bid, and I uh, copied their uh, what they were going to do to our tanks, and then sent it out to everybody Respect. else. Yeah, um, so kind of cheated there, but that's uh, didn't tell anybody else what they bid, but um, that really came in handy. Yeah, well, <coughs> it's good that to get three bids. I'm very excited. Yes. Uh, truck bids is up next. It was kind of a complicated situation and how we did this, but uh, I think we came out pretty well. Um, talked to everybody about bidding together. Uh, if they got all the bids they could, they could uh, muster through their shop, if they could give us a, a discount. Uh, only one of them said they would give us a discount on top of their already discounted items, uh, and that was Honeyman. And they'd give a 200 if we gave them all the trucks, we'd give, they'd give us a $200 discount on each vehicle uh, on top of what they already give us. Uh, if you look at all the numbers, uh, that $200 probably wouldn't amount to anything compared to the savings we would going with other providers. Uh, so, starting off, the police uh, vehicles, uh, pickups. Um, Ford came in at, uh, from Honeyman at $38,606. I did put a new uh, sheet on your desk uh, the, uh, because the sheet that was in your packet didn't reflect the price with the extended warranty, the 100,000 mile warranty. So the price on the, uh, the summary is correct and the price on the new sheet on your desk is correct. Uh, uh, so $38,606 was a $1,400 uh, extended warranty. Um, now, how do you know who this is? Because uh, this is a four. I, I know, say. but who do you know? What company it is? Honeyman. It's four. How do you yeah, know? Because we only it, did I one. I think it should company. be on their letterhead. Or, I mean, this doesn't look How do you know it's an official or? bid? On the back side, it says Nemaha Valley Motors. Yeah, this one says Nemaha Valley Motors, but... Um, uh, let me think. Where'd you go? This is this is basically what they always look like when they give them to us. I well, I've know, never but seen they should be on letterhead. Um, so I've never seen a bid like this. Bid. We, I mean, the one that Nordis gave Does us. This mean something? And this, here? what's this one here? This one's Nemo Valley. 
and that one has letterhead. Oh, is that why you gave us because it got chopped off? No, I gave it because uh, the original one didn't reflect the fourth out the Nemaha uh, Valley had. But to. see on this this next one, uh -huh. the Nemaha Valley Motors one, it cut off. You cut this off, so I had. Huh. I had a hard time telling that was Nemaha Valley okay, Motors, but you have a letterhead. The other thing that made me nervous about this is it says on the bottom, our subject, uh, the price shown on this are tentative and subject to change or correction without prior notice. It says re refer to the vehicle invoice for final vehicle content and pricing. Once, once we order it, they'll give us an invoice and it will reflect this. Or we're not ordering for them. I mean, that's just what it is. They're they're going to give us this price. And we're not ordering. We're not ordering from them in the first place for this one. Uh, if you go with our recommendations, but this is this is how they all bid. Every single one of them. They just wrote down at the bottom what they were bidding. Well, I think it makes me a little nervous because it doesn't show that their contract. It doesn't look like a contract. Mm -hmm. It just looks like. But I, I understand on the first one, we're not using uh, Nemaha Valley 32.5. Is that, is that this one? So Nemaha Valley's right here. But you're saying it should, it should be 32.5. Like compare, compare it to Nordis Motor. Okay, they've got it on their letterhead. They've got right. total price down at the bottom. We can tell that is their bid from Nordis Motor. The other ones we can't really. Well, Nemo Valley's at the top. We couldn't see that before, though. Yeah. That would that would have been helpful because it was hard to follow what these. I didn't know it cut out. Well, it says it right there too. Shipped to Nemo Valley Motors. Nemo Valley Motors sold to. Where does it say it here? Oh, it. Wow, it really did a number on that. Um, I don't know why it did that. Okay, well we're not using this bid sheet anyway, right? Not for the not. If you go with how I recommended, uh, we would go with Nordis on the police vehicle uh, because it is a local bidder, and they're within the ten percent that we set mm -hmm. set forward. Uh, so for the police vehicle, uh, thirty four thousand nine hundred sixty four dollars for their Chevy fifteen hundred. Uh, for the street vehicle, uh, a little bit more went into this. Uh, Ford was the only one uh, uh, that could do it at any dealership. Uh, get a 50, uh, or five, F550, uh, which is comparable, if you, if you would, to uh, a 5500 in Chevy and Dodge. Um, I was fairly certain that uh, after talking to the owner of the dealership in Beatrice that they could uh, do the 5500, but then I called them back and their salesman says they can't. Uh, so that was kind of a hold up. Uh, but they said they could do most of the service work so I just went a little further out just to see what the number would be and they brought back a 42500 for the Dodge 5500 versus Ford's uh, 38868 for their F550. But see again Baxter has theirs listed on their bid. And then we go over here for Honeyman. You don't even know this is Honeyman. Okay, so what? Uh, so I turn. What are you concerned about? That they're make that they're going to hold this contract. They haven't signed. I mean, there's like. Well, if they don't give us a price, so I mean, we're just not going to buy this. Right. From correct. So. But well, it's, well, for the bid, we need it to look like Nordis on a letterhead. With a final price, it's got a, it's got a final right. price. Well, we need it on a letterhead. We need it. Okay, more so looking. So you can approve this contingent on if they sent uh, sending a a, a letterhead. Yeah. Okay, but you that's need to fine. make sure that because Good. that's very confusing. I, when I looked at this, it was very confusing because I couldn't see any names. I mean, I had to search to figure out which one was which, and some of them didn't tie to your schedule. Right, the two in the in the police one didn't tie. Yeah, so it was very confusing. Okay. And but I, can, I can get that, yeah. Okay, so next time, just make sure that when you get bids like this, that okay. they have some kind of signs that they, that's their price. Okay. Okay. Did they do this writing in right here? Yeah, they all wrote all their own bids. So they could have put Honeyman Ford there or something. Something. Okay. No, okay. I, I can 
get them to do that. So going back to that, so okay. the street one is 38. 868. From Honeyman. Honeyman, yeah. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. And then parks, um, okay, uh, parks and water and sewer. Uh, Chevy uh, apparently stopped making 2019 2500s and 3500s. Uh, they are gearing up for 2020. So they would not turn a bid in uh, from Nordis for, for anybody. Uh, not even for 2020, just for Grimm? No. Uh, they, we'd have to wait a year to, to get that done. They don't have any specs. They don't have any uh, of that information. They already retooled uh, for the 1500, so there, there's no more gap for that. Uh, that's why they can still sell that one. Uh, so they wouldn't turn in a bid. Um, which I told them we were kind of... Nordis, was, we're getting a 2019, right? Right, 20, 2019, 1500. Madam Mayor. Okay. Yes. I was just curious, also did we check because any show we watch where they're, they're really discounting these 2018s, does that check out? Did you look into that? That they're what? Instead of a 2019 mm -hmm. or 2019, the 2018s are really selling pretty reasonable. Did you check on the 18s? The, well, the they wouldn't come equipped like we need them to come equipped. Like the uh, the 2500, all these minus the police are getting there. Uh, they're not going to have a bed. They're going to have hydraulics or the the equipment we need specifically for the job they need to be done. I understand, but yeah. was it asked about the 2000s? If there was a possibility to get the 2018s that they're advertising. Well, they're probably not building them anymore, Terry. No, but they're, they're in they're, inventory. Uh, that's why they're cheaper. What's built is already built, and that's all that's available. The discounts that we receive uh, via municipal discount are not available on, on anything that's on their lot. Oh, existing inventory. Yeah, existing yeah, inventory. That's why we build everything. It, it makes it almost as cheap as, as a used vehicle or even a new vehicle they're trying to get rid of. Yeah, I mean, five thousand dollars just just because we're a municipality per vehicle is is what they give us. They did discount eight thousand dollars. Yeah, eight thousand dollars on page sixty-five. Right, and this guarantees that we'll have the equipment that <laughs> we need, me. rather than having to piecemeal possibly some of our equipment into them, which might cost us even more. So, uh, so uh, on the on the parks vehicle, uh, Honeyman came in at 27,476 and uh, Nemaha Valley came in at 32,000 uh, so we were recommending. See we were cut off there. Okay that's that's I did not notice that. What so page is that? Right. I'm sorry what? What page is that one on? The bid for from Nemaha Valley is 68, 66 I'm sorry. The 32,000? Yeah and then um, for water and sewer uh, Honeyman uh, Ford came in at 36,242 and Nemaha Valley came in at 34,750 for their Dodge 3500. So that um, we would recommend going with Dodge on the water sewer. And then uh, below you'll see that where uh, these vehicles would be brought in um, and we would, for the police, we'd send uh, I don't know which number it is, but uh, their uh, one of their trucks down to the water sewer department. 572. Yeah. 572. Okay, 572 will go to the water sewer department, and <clears throat> one of theirs will uh, uh, 528 would be replaced, and then uh, the one we're buying here would replace uh, 514, their 1996 Dodge, uh, and then. Um, on the other ones, uh, I think 543 is the Parks, uh, which would be surplus. Uh, it's a 1994 Chevy, and then uh, 521 1997 uh, Ford um, F350 uh, would be replaced with that uh, F550. Um, you know these warranties. The only thing we seek extended warranties on is on police vehicles. Or the, uh, the, I don't think we'll hit. I don't think we hit a hundred thousand miles in the first five years on some of these on other, the other vehicles. vehicles. Yeah, the the uh, parks stays in town. Um, street would stay in. It's a dump truck. Stay in town. A smaller one. 
and uh, water sewer might get might get close, but the the police department hits that hundred thousand pretty easily. So you want to buy the water sewer from Nemaha Valley, mm -hmm. the parks from Honeyman, the street from Honeyman, and the Chevy from Nordis. I'm glad you're buying one from Nordis. Yes, and I was happy he he came in. We were kind of concerned because we got Ford in and uh, Nemaha Valley in, and and uh, the Dodge looked. Uh, uh, look to be a, a huge competitor and usually Chevy doesn't come in at this well compared to the other ones so we were we were happy with that so are you guys you want to make a motion to approve those four specific vehicles and then we'll talk about the surplus ones I move to approve those uh, vehicles the four as recommended by Austin yes. second is there any further discussion I'll we're gonna do this all at once are you going to buy them all at once? I assume. Yeah, we're going to order. They take at least six weeks, right, Doc? Wow. At least six weeks. They say then you six days, but usually ten. Yeah, it, and depends on how busy they are. Yes. And we and then we got to take the trucks and have a service bed and. Yeah, and they'll stuff. go. They'll go right. As, except, well, even the police vehicle has has to go somewhere okay. to get equipped. Okay. Yeah. So we, what did we vote? Nope. You just okay. Motion. <laughs> motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Seven zero. Okay. As far as surplus, they change. Well, you're going to move the one vehicle to Parks water. and Rec, and then you want no, to water sewer. no to water, water sewer. sewer. We're going to move the police vehicle to water sewer. Uh, That's why water sewer is getting rid of too. The ninety six and I guess we should have made that motion. I guess we said as you recommended, which would include the taking out of the funds as you recommended. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Because that's how we that's how everyone we budgeted. agreed to that. Right. Okay. As and budgeted. then the surplus ones. Now is one of these the ones that Kim Boardman redid? The nineteen ninety eight Dodge, yes. Nineteen ninety eight Dodge. When did he do that? Two years ago. Two years? Yeah. Do you remember how much he spent? Uh five thousand dollars. Six. Six thousand dollars. Five thousand uh dollars. -huh. And we can't use that truck? No, no, we're having to put more maintenance in than it's worth. That specific truck? That specific truck, yes. And we're hoping we get some money out of it uh, by going to one of the auction sites. Uh, I really hope so. Well, that, that's painful that we did that two years ago on a truck we're going to surplus. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would entertain a motion to surplus those three trucks, 528. Four trucks. Five. Okay, four trucks, number 528, 521, 543, and 514. I saw Sur You said surplus them? Surplus them once we get the new vehicles in, yes. Is that we all right? We didn't have any use for them, huh? Uh -uh. All three of them. We're hoping, we're hoping to use the money we get from those vehicles to, to put back where this money comes out. Did you make that in. motion? Diane did. I still move. Was there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0. All right. <coughs> uh, I was recently approached uh, by Chad Kramer of Kramer Oil uh, about buying a portion of the property we own off 11th Road, uh, just south of his uh, CJ East. Um, and he wanted to see how uh, we felt about selling it, so I'm, that's my question right now: is how do we feel about selling it? Uh, we paid $150,000 with the sale that's I'll say started because we paid it in increments um, over the years, uh, $150,000. Um, and Chad's looking to purchase it. He has plans to build on it and expand his business. Um, there are two maps attached. Uh, one of the maps has a section. And in fact, this has changed since I put this together. Uh, that back half, the 2.33 acres, is what he's really looking to purchase, uh, or he would purchase the whole lot for a set price. So everything we own right there, uh, he offered to buy. Including south the of their L? offices. The whole, the whole L, yes. So he, he wants to know if we are interested in selling it. You know, I think there's a, there's a lot of questions related to that. Number one, you know, from an economic development standpoint, we were just talking about industrial park. Do we want to try to put a small industrial park in there? Or if he's going to put industry in, is he building a building? Mm -hmm. And how much money is he 
what is, what effect is he going to have on the tax rolls with that? He is looking to branch out into a new sector. Okay, so I think he needs to do like a cost-benefit analysis because I think this is a perfect example of what we're supposed to look for on economic development. If he's going to bring in a building and certain employees and kind of, if he can give us enough information to see what the cost-benefit is to the city, then I think we have to analyze it from that standpoint. I mean, if he's, if he's investing in a new business and he's building a building, there's no reason for us to consider an industrial park there because he's already doing that himself. I just need to, I think we need to be really smart here about um, if he's gonna bring in, you know, certain uh, property taxes and if he's gonna bring in certain employees and then we need to make that really easy for him to expand his business. That's my personal take. I, I don't know if there's enough room there to do much of an industrial park. Just well, we were looking at five and acres, things. and but it does have access off 11th Road. But but, we, but, uh, but yeah, he's would, already doing that. Actually, right, and it would it would point. take most of our width of our the bottom of the L to get to the back. I mean, you know, the I, larger it area. would start to you know you get eaten up just by access. I was road. just you know we keep right. thinking about looking for an industrial park, and right. I was like, well, we actually have to ask those questions I'm now. I'm pretty glad they've invested a lot of money in the community. They've grown a lot. I mean, I, I'm glad they want to expand. I mean, hopefully they continue. Yeah, yeah so I would yeah. I would rather have them buy the entire piece of property. There's I no reason do. for us to have yeah. a small Correct. section. Yeah. I would like them to kind of present to us what benefits is coming to the city from this, and we can do that. I, that should affect the price we sell it at. I think we need to do what find out what the comparable price would be for those areas, like comparable area, see what that price right. is. But I do think we need to... If he's really bringing in property tax dollars and possibly employees, I think we need to build that into what price we would sell it at. There's a kind of a waterway between the old Walmart and this property and the, the dealership there. Is there a city right of way through that, that corridor? Uh, no, I, it's just that it's just, a, just, it's just the driveway. A it's, it's a pure, I mean, it's, as it just looks here, like it looks exactly line. what yeah okay. just a lot like i don't know if this was just drawn on no nope. okay no, uh just my red and green is what okay is what i did so at this point in time i think we should recommend saying yeah we would consider selling it mm -hmm. um the more information you give us the more flexibility we'll have in the price and maybe have a finance and admin meeting once austin gets more information and and talk through it and then bring it to the council what do you guys think Sounds good. I think we need to be smart about this. Um, I'm glad he's expanding his business. So I, I think we should use this as an opportunity to be have it be an economic development win for the community. All right. And, and 150 thousand was the amount that the city paid for the entire for the three parcel. three point six but acres. My yeah. my takeaway from that is that's a sunk cost. Mm -hmm. If we paid a million dollars, it doesn't matter because. It's a sunk cost. What we yeah. need to do is figure out how to encourage development. And there's already water, sewer, street there for him to expand. So I think it could be a win-win for our community. So I think we need to price it wisely. Okay. So we will uh, and answer you guys all in agreement that it would be a yes, we would sell it. Okay. And we'll have to evaluate what yes. the price would be yep. yeah. based on what he gives us. Okay. So the answer is yes. And then how much will be turned on what he provides for us? Okay. And but but you probably can find uh, comparable areas. Um, recently, in the comment, I think the property just south of there was purchased not too long ago. The, the they agreed. The valuation for this property is eighty-one thousand two hundred dollars. The valuation. Yep. Okay, but um, I also surrounding areas and the property just to the south of there, also the property on uh, Prairie Lane Road, I think was turned not too long ago so check those out as well I don't think we should overprice it I think we should encourage oh, no. the development so like I said this $150,000 is a sunk cost all right does that answer your questions uh, yeah okay um, received a quote for um, CAS for Frank Marshall Drive design I uh, just wanted to check back because uh, you guys wanted to look at um, I think the, the decision previously was yes let's get these uh, designs done so we can do it in the future not this year uh, I just wanted to make sure when I got this bid uh, 
uh, that we still wanted to go for it. This isn't a project this year. That was when that's we were correct. doing five years. Right. So that's a no. No. Okay. All right. Um, uh, let's see. Transportation alternative. Um, they, I have some paperwork to fill out on this, but uh, CES provided a, a quote for design uh, for this project. Uh, it's seven thousand six hundred and forty dollars. Um, uh, the KDOT provided uh, their award letter with stipulations, uh, three stipulations. Uh, pavement uh, matches on both sides, no brick in the middle of the pathway, and need to consider a raised uh, crosswalk slash speed table uh, to calm the traffic improve uh, improve safety. I did discuss with KDOT what they meant by consider and their representative told me that unless it was going to cause drainage issues or something other that uh, some other maintenance issue that we should make it uh, raised. I mean it's already a hump right now. Um, I think that's a big mistake. But it's a gradual hump. It's not you and know, and I like think that the word that they use, hump. the other one says match, include, and then consider. Right. And consider doesn't mean, mean we have to do it. Think about the, um, how slick the brick is. And if you put a raised platform on there on Broadway, on, on the icy streets we have right now, would have been horrible. The other thing is that we never, ever discussed a raised platform or speed control. We were trying to reduce the hump to make it more accessible. The other thing is that we, um, I think it would be a trip hazard when we have these special events. You know, we have like the car show has a, when we have those blocked off, I think people will trip over it. Well, it will, it shouldn't won't be raised. It'll that be time. a, it'll be a ramp. Like it'll be a, gra it'll be a gradual. It won't be because the, because you're going to match the existing and right, I mean, the existing is down below. It's kind of down below, yes. And so it's going to be go significantly less. But the race platforms in, uh, in, in Manhattan are only around the shopping center between the parking and the shopping center. That's totally different than our downtown area. And you, when you go to Beatrice and the trail crosses Highway 77, you don't have a raised platform. I know, and it's dangerous as crap. I about got hit there myself. And when you go on Saltillo Road, <laughs> when you in Lincoln, when the trail crosses, it's not a raised and I platform. I know two people who've been killed on that road. <laughs> that, that's they call but, it the most so, dangerous. Not road a good argument in Nebraska. But no, but I'm but the if the volume that we're going to have compared to Saltillo Road and Highway 77 is very I hope low. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the speed limits a lot lower than those areas do. I wouldn't think we'd need a speed bump on Main Street. So I think what we want to do is go back to what we originally presented. We have the nice smooth brick and we can put a concrete which they require and to match the pavement on both sides and go back to our original plan as we presented. So what do, what do you want me to tell that KDOT representative who gave me the explanation that I just told you? That we, that we considered it and that's not what we prefer. I, I think we well, shouldn't pick this fight with KDOT. The thing is, when we get done, do they have to look over the uh, once CES gets done? We have to you submit know, the plans. Austin, when you first presented them. this, you uh -huh. said they wanted. They wanted. That was not the word Which they used. Which is why I double checked. Uh, when uh, I, d I, I sat on the phone with him. He said exactly this. I can't, I'm not lying to you here. I want to know what you want me to tell him. Well, it says consider, so we've considered it, and it's not the best thing for our Broadway street. Okay. Uh, is that the consensus? Or, I mean, I, I'm wanted, just saying, I wanted to get it. I think we should get a consensus on that. That's just my opinion. I mean. Okay, I just laid out all the reasons why not to. Well, I think we should, because I don't think we should. It's what obviously KDOT prefers. I don't think it's a hazard. I think it would look good. I think it would be good for safety. Um, I don't think it's any reason why we shouldn't do it their way. I think KDOT might be right. Furthermore, it's what they want. And it's not what they want. They said to consider. Well, you know, if I tell my daughter to consider cleaning up her attitude, it's because I want her to do that. Well, <laughs> Just the, saying. The it's obviously what they so want. So they said match and they said include were the curb first two requirements. There. So we're not going to pull the curb and the wheels and all that out to redo right. this project. So basically, it's going to stay at the elevation it is. The only thing it's going to change is the taper from the bulkheads on each side to that sidewalk in the middle. Mm -hmm. 
Right, and that, well, the sidewalk does kind of dip into that asphalt, so it's not as high as, as that hump is going to be. Because right. they want you to match. Yeah. Right. They want you to match. It'll yeah. actually be lower than it is now yeah. at the, the, you know, the at, climax. At the, the apex. The apex. Yeah. Thank you. The current hump that's right there, we're talking about either keeping it or removing it? No, we're taking that taking that out, and okay. they're going to match the, the existing wheels. To make it's, the pathway. The wheel's probably, I don't know, maybe an inch and a half or something. There's an asphalt. Into the asphalt. Yeah. Into the asphalt. Yeah, down. They're yeah. here and the hump goes this way. So it's got to come down in right. order to match the wheels. Right. So we're going to bring it down. Right. The hump is coming down. Yes. A little bit. It's not a pl raised platform then. It, it depends on how much. You got, it, it's an optical illusion. We got to actually see what. Because if we can't, if we, if, if the wheel comes down to the level of what the brick is uh, currently on the rest of the street, then I think they'd probably go with us on, on the flat surface because we're not going they're not going to pay to change the wheels. So they well, want you to match it. They want you to match yeah. it. Yeah, I hope those were terribly expensive. Right. So, so I'd, I'd, this was I'd the see where this is what we had we presented. And it moved up a little bit and gradually down. It's not a raised platform. It's a gradual up and a gradual down. Is that what you're talking about? I, I think it. I, I think we have a terminology difference. But I mean, raised platform. That is a raised platform. That it's just is not raised. Raised. I mean, I. This I'm okay with. This is what magic. we expected. It'll be higher than the rest of the street. Yeah. It, the, because the wheels just are in the higher center. than the rest of the street. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah just it, in the center. Because, because you need to grade. Right. Yeah. To drain. And yeah, but, we're, we're not so it's talking gonna about raise go. everything else. No, it's going to be like this. Yeah. Because yes. they're going to yeah. make a yeah. speed bump. They want to slow traffic. So they're no, we're not making no, a speed no, bump. No, 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 traffic. What, what it, isn't that what Which is what you said in the newspaper. Is that we were going to slow traffic. It's calm traffic. If you see something coming, you tend to slow down. It's going to it's going to look higher than everything else. So you're going to be just like a narrow road. You're going to slow down for the narrow road, and and that little transition. That's that's a traffic calming. It's not it's not a it, we're not raising everything up. It's it won't it's, be as much of a lip as a lay down curve. Right. It'll be less than that much of a raise. Yeah. It, it's not as long as it stays according to this. Well, I believe that is basically the same thing, is it not? Yeah. Nothing? Yeah. Yeah. Just it's going to be raised. It's going to be a raised platform like that. Okay. Because it's raised. This is what we presented. Yeah. Right. Because it's high. It's higher than the rest of the street, so it's got to raise. Anyways. Yeah. If you stand on the wagon wheel, you can on the brick. You can see it kind of dips in both yeah. directions. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're not looking at putting a a, a speed. What you think is speed. You bump. would have to be going pretty fast to really Ramp it. catch air or yeah. something. Hopefully, no one's going that so fast. So it's a smooth up and a smooth, smooth down. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It'll it'll and make it'll make you like this. it'll make you want to slow down. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, so we're. So just to make sure when you present it. And uh, we want it built like that. Okay. With CES. Right. And they're going to give us how much money? 92000 yeah. Just for the for grant. that crossing there. Yes. Yep. We have Imagine. to pay the engineering. The engineering Design is on. engineering by ourselves. And then uh, the match, the 20% match. So on page 75, uh, CES is giving me preliminary construction documents for 7640 Yep. Those are all ours. Yep. And then, and then, let's see. And then we're going to also have to pay, that's the wrong one, up to 12000 No, that is, no, that is the construction. So up to 12000 for the preliminary engineering costs. Is that true? No, no, that's what that is. They, this, they estimated this, this is and then they came in into that. So well, the, this is the, construction. the twelve thousand was what they estimated previous to putting this out. So this is the seventy six forty. Yes. Okay. And so that's our out of pocket, and then we share ninety percent on the other cost. They, up to they this. pay. They pay eighty percent. We pay twenty. Eighty twenty. Yep. Eighty twenty up to ninety one six twenty six. Right. Okay. 
So I guess first we have to say if we're going to approve this grant, because you need to let them know. Right. So, um, so the grant was sent to us showing that uh, we'll be awarded 91626 for that project. Is there a motion to approve that grant? Move to approve the transportation alternative grant. For 91626? 91626. Is there a second? I'll second, second. it. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0. And then the next step is we have to approve CES. You know, we, I think it was in the minutes, but at the last uh, street committee meeting, we discussed using CES for this project. Mm -hmm. Remember we, uh, Kevin, you were, we were, you were there? Yeah, and Bobby. And Bobby, she's yeah. not here. So now I'm looking for another person to shake their head. So we agreed that we recommended the CES. Mm -hmm. Did we vote on that last time? Uh, we you, didn't. You asked me to bring back this figure and talk about it in the street. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you guys all okay with CES going to them for this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want to go ahead and approve? Uh, and that's for doing just one part of that. The design. Thing. Yeah. 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 Right. Not. The, yeah. The design phase. Yeah. And preliminary engineering. That's the same thing. Design and preliminary. Yep. Okay. And is that sending it out to get it approved for the grant? Is that what this is? No, this is, uh, I, I have paperwork to put together. You guys approve the grant. This is just the portion we pay for on our own. And then we'll bid it? Yeah. The project itself? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we're just so approving just to accept the grant the and to do the engineering, engineering on it. The design and then, engineering. Yep. Then they will go out for a bid on it, correct? On the, um, K on the project. Yeah, KDOT should. Yeah. Okay. They'll do the, the bid? The bid, yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm fairly certain. So, we're, we've already accepted the grant, so we're accepting the estimate, or not the estimate, the lump fee, the sum of 7640 with CES to the, do the preliminary engineering related to that project. It's on page 75, 76, and 77. Move to approve CES for the Transportation Alternative Engineering on the 7th Street Intersection Improvement. For 7640 7640 Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0. All right. Um, which fund? Sales tax. Sales tax. Okay. Yeah. Um, I believe we have it listed on the master project okay. list coming out of sales tax. Right. Sure yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it is listed on there, isn't it? Yes, because I put phase two on it last time. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Just want to make sure where it's going. All right. Uh, next one is uh, my conference request list. Um, I'm requesting the same conferences that uh, I was approved for last year. Um, uh, I appreciate your consideration and approval of these uh, conferences. Uh, these conferences help me keep up to date and continue learning about my job. I'm still early in my career and have a lot to keep learning. Uh, also on this list are two conferences that Cindy will be attending. Um, these will help her in continuing to learn about the city clerk's position and, and get her started on being a certified municipal clerk. Um, if you have any questions, uh, I didn't get any questions about my conferences or anything like that before this but uh, I look for uh, your approval and I put estimates on how much each, each one of these would cost the uh, CCMFOA conference I it's only a couple weeks out it's not a problem right registers okay she's already I did register already. okay well I was, yeah. I was I thinking that's canceled, getting pretty close yeah. to it's just in Manhattan so it's only yeah, a that's one, what I, it'll only be a one night stay so the hotel won't be that much so, were these the, the only ones you wanted to go to Cindy I think there is a one-day one that's going to from the league. That's for basic. Yeah, I looked at that. Clerk things. Mm -hmm. It and says MTI clerk fundamentals in April fifth in Garnett. Right. I I didn't realize Garnett was so far, but Sorry. I can still drive that in one day and come back. So I mean, I don't yeah. mind doing that. It. I will see about trying to get to that just because I think it's maybe good to have 
the leagues take as well. Well, as the league the training CCMFOA. is really good. I, yeah, and that's yeah, and yeah, they is. Since so, this is and kind I of meet a, a lot of people position. in the league, maybe I would want to talk to again. Yeah, no, so, the networking aspect obviously yeah, huge. But and I, you know, I will say these also are kind of spread out. All these, which is kind of nice, so they're mm -hmm. not butting up against We're not each other. Yeah, close to each other. So and sure. I won't leave the people with the names. I don't like to do that. <laughs> so you want to add the MTI conference on April? I'll 5th? see if that if that's still open. The the Nashville one is that a flying or driving trip? Driving trip. Yeah, it with all the weight, like it takes two and a half hours to get to the airport. Yeah. It take four and a half hours to fly there, five and a half it's, to get back. It's not that far. You go to St. Louis and down. Exactly. And down. So that that saves sure, a ton of money on flying. Is a water and sewer conference? Is somebody from water sewer going on that? Uh, typically, they uh, some of them, uh, at least one of them, goes to get certified in one of their areas. So we we st we have Kent and Del Kent certified in both. Right. We have Delmar certified in water and Tony certified in sewer or reverse. Uh, Delmar has got water and, and sewer. some sewer. And yeah, some he's sewer. got both. Kevin's got some too, and I'm not yeah, sure what yeah. he's got. The each, and Hammond's got some stuff too. Each one of them, except for PJ, have some sort of certification. Yeah, they and, and I to don't water have or sewer. Yeah, water or sewer. And some of them have part of both. Yeah. So, are you sending one of them for any of those for certification? Yeah, to get recertified. So, so to keep up on their hours, they have to get five hours a year, or four, or it's. Is it every two years they every have to years. have, so they have to figure out to make so they sure wrote, they either get it all in one year or get part each year? Yeah. There's a couple different schools they can go to, but this provides yeah. a lot of it. Well, I know when we first talked about these, that you were going to do a lunch and learn. Did you do a lunch and learn on this? I did. I the the one I did. Well, I I didn't do a lunch and learn. I did. Um, I think you, uh, I followed what you were doing. As far as I sent out a huge document on my uh, trip to water trip to Baltimore. I I had to be honest. I had the water sewer all ready to go, and it just uh, I didn't have it formatted and everything just came down on everything else and did you um communicate what you learned to the water sewer department yes yeah and we um they uh, i mean that's the most important lesson right. learn in yes. my opinion we, def we definitely definitely pass along the information we sit down and talk about it yes i definitely want to make sure they're up to date as well okay can we just approve the first two for now and then we can discuss the other two later Is that your motion? I'm just asking. Uh, I'd, well, no, because the, the ICMA is in my contract. So um, that one's already approved. And um, the, I'd, I'd prefer to know where I'm going. That way I can make sure we have everything in line. It helps with these guys in here, especially to know where everything's at. Uh, and uh, it just, it makes it, beneficial for everybody if, if we all know what's on the table um, and this has been pared down over the years I, I took off a conference last year at your guys's request um, and this actually works out they are pretty spread out um, one next month uh, the one the month after that and that one's one of my f uh, basically it's free that's that's a payment for one of the sessions they they require payment for but it's basically a free conference and in, in, in Lawrence other than hotel stay um, and then uh, KACM the, the annual con conference is all the way at the end of the year um, so it's it's pretty well spread out and, and works for everybody well for the future that ICMA annual conference is that I mean you would want to go to it every year I'm taking next year off because uh, it's in Canada it's one of the most beneficial conferences I've ever I ever go to uh, I put pages and pages together uh, I don't know if you guys read what I put mm -hmm. in there uh, and I don't know what you guys got out of it but I get a lot out of that conference <coughs> that's why I I hinge on that um, so I mean these are all uh, I've been told I, I need to keep learning and these really help uh, they are all across the spectrum uh, of things uh, 
for instance, the spring conference is an academic one um, that's at KU. Uh, they use their uh, um, their professors and all their contacts to get that one together whereas the KACM conference in Garden City is a, a practical where you actually get to see everything in, in, in operation. Uh, so everything offers something different for me. It's not the same conference over and over and over. I move to approve the administrator and city clerk conferences with the possible addition of the MTI league. training. MTI training with the league. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 6 1. All right. Um, okay. Uh, I think that is all I have for now. All right. Oh, uh, I do. Um, one question: uh, We had set up that mock uh, thing for the water shop. I don't know if you all got to see it on that land that we own over there. Um, what? I haven't got any comments back from you guys. I don't know what you guys think about that. I know we need to talk about um, uh, trail and stuff like that. Uh, but initially, without getting any feedback from the trail, what what did you guys think about? It? Uh, the placement of that shop. The cones represent a fence or a wall? <laughs> that Somebody represents that. the building. That, that represents the, the, the building. building. Okay. That's what that's, scares me a little what, bit. Oh, I, actually, I thought it, I mean, how tall is the sidewall? The, we haven't Proposed. figured we haven't figured that okay. out. So we just have to be tall enough tall. to get the tall, sewer truck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the tall, sewer truck, but, yeah. And the, probably the roof pitched east-west? Not uh, north south. We'd we'd have to get some design okay. layouts on I was, consideration. I was standing over there here yeah. last week, kind of trying to visualize what it would yeah. look like. It's, we we haven't gotten the vertical it part feels down. Far away when you look at cones, and then yeah. I went, well, if it's really tall, then it might look yeah. kind of close. We so. ha we haven't gotten the vertical portion down. We've sure. gotten somewhat the layout where vehicles could sit and how vehicles get in there and, yeah. and where the offices are and all that stuff. Um, I thought we were gonna you were gonna enter off Carolina, but the drawing showed entering off. 7th Street. The 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 parking for the guys and where they enter would be off. Uh, oh, you mean Calhoun? Calhoun, right? Is that Calhoun? I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, Calhoun. Mm -hmm. That's where they would go into the shop. Because um, uh, that's where they would be able to park their vehicles. But all their four big garage doors are going to be... Would be off into 7th Street. Wait, are you guys okay with all those garage doors off 7th Street? I'm not in love with it. Would would there would it be concrete apron? I mean, there's a lot of questions. Would be a concrete that. apron, yes. Yeah, to get into the shop, yes. I think if the whole area was improved, it's maybe optimally shown with some of these drawings and things. It wouldn't be bad, but out of the nowhere, yeah, it doesn't sound super great. Okay. You know. It's kind of, it's an awful big, I mean, every inch of the lot yeah. is being going to be a building. Calhoun would be improved would be really nice. Yeah. So it, as far as that tie-in and things, and I'm talking about But Catlin's trail. not even part of our TA project. No, no, but I mean, but uh, you know, as far as things go, it, it would. It's kind of a rough area that hasn't seen improvement or love for a long time. Just kind of came back into our fold. But I talked to some trail people, and they didn't seem overly concerned about it. Didn't the, did they see the cones? Yeah, I, I think that, and the thing that sold me that I kind of mentioned to people too is that if this is well lit which it would be where the drive up doors are and things. It actually helped with some security issues that have been down there because it's such a dark kind of area. I mean, there's wildlife. Open space. And wild children running more wild. <laughs> <laughs> Open. Yes. Free range. We don't want, children. Children. We don't want <laughs> wild children. Feral. Feral kids. <laughs> okay. Okay, is that all? Yeah, we, yeah, we just wanted some feedback. We, um, we could discuss this. it at the workshop maybe. Okay. When, when do you foresee a workshop? Um, I, in April or, or March? Uh, well, we got. Uh, is April okay? I mean, that, that the first shot at the budget? Yeah. Talking about capital improvements? Mm -hmm. Yep. You guys okay with April? Wait until yeah. April? Okay, we'll have to do April, May then. Back to back months. April, May. Are you alright with that? Uh, I think that's what we did last year. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Anything else? Nope, that's it. All right, we'll move along to standing committee reports. First, I want to say on the street, I think they did a great job with the snow. So thank you, crew. 
and um, Austin, you recognized about the increase in the KDOT monies for connecting links. It'll give us about 5500 a year, mm -hmm. which won't offset the cost of the, what us to do clink every seven years, but 5500 times 7, 3750 is more than without 3750. Mm -hmm. So it'll help off that, set those costs. You mentioned that you looked at the Carolina wall. Were they talking about the Heritage Trust Fund for that? The, when they said funding? Because it was a WPA project? They, uh, I've never seen Heritage Trust Fund uh, do something like that. Uh, they didn't tell me what kind of funding. He said his sister, who works in his office, um, had some contacts, and she would get something to me. Yeah, I think it's a it's a W. It was a, WPA, a WPA project. project. So yeah, yeah but so. it's not a historic site. We, we would have we to could get make that. it an historic site. Well, you, that's the first thing you have to do is go and ask for it. To be then we wouldn't. I don't know if we would have uh, the leeway that this you don't. the this contractor would need to, to fix it. Fix it. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't know that for sure. But all right. Just, well, see what there is there. Yep. And then um, I had a couple people stopped me that about the UTVs saying you understand that UTVs are taxed at 30 percent and so I went and talked to the appraiser's office and sure enough Damn. you know boats are taxed at 5 percent but UTVs are taxed at 30 and it's a state statute so I and I said well have they ever I said how come it's so high and they said well nobody's ever you know really pressed to make it less so basically the tax is going to be high at the appraiser's office on those vehicles. So I'm just letting everybody know about that. And second, I mean, you need to write your congressmen and senators and ask them to bring it up as a House bill to change it. And she said that uh, votes used to be 30% and they reduced it to five. So it's really about people writing their senators and congressmen and say, can we, you know, there, what's your justification? I don't think there's any specific I, justification. I, I for think that what I've heard for justification is mostly that they aren't tagged or things like regular vehicles. And since they use the public right of way, this is their way of recouping that ex expense since the state's not getting any kind of tag. registration or tag fees or anything. But we don't get tags it. on boats either. No, but I mean, but they aren't using the roads. That's the way I understand. Oh, the, through Pratt or wherever, yeah. So anyway, but we can write our congressman and ask them to reduce it. Well, there's a lot of things we can write our congressman okay. about. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying. So I just wanted to throw that out. Um, anybody else have streets? Yeah, um, I, they did a great job. Sorry. No. They did a great oh, yeah. job cleaning streets. Um, did they have some equipment problems maybe overnight? It seemed like I'm surprised they didn't have more of the piles along the highway cleaned up this morning than they did it was mentioned to me he said it was one of the hardest snows they've is that washed yeah. it okay was a nightmare. I, I knew the some slush and the yeah. rain he said it was a nightmare at the bottom it was, it was slushy icy <laughs> gross stuff. Yes. Yeah, okay the they'll be i was tonight. just curious they they'll be great. i'm not complaining yep. at all i just i know that they had all those piles they had some piles all cleaned yeah. up on the highway yep. not they did just that not all because it yeah if it, even if it doesn't get above freezing the highway should heat up enough to get most of it cleared so well next year i think we need to put notices in the paper early in the newsletter and let people know about moving their vehicles. We'll do that next. Off the routes. And then also, what is it, eight hours after the snow stops, people should have their sidewalks shoveled? It's 12 to 24. 12 to 24. 12 to 24 hours. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And we have sent a couple letters to businesses that are empty. Well, there are many of the residents that, that have not shoveled, and mm -hmm. and I'm thinking of my my son who walks, and the other postal people who walk ah. 17 miles and this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So well, I'm glad Which, they're I don't, 17 yeah. miles a day. Yeah. So they let sent letters out only for businesses and not well, for personal residents. Where we get complaints. If we've got a complaint, we'll send a we'll and, send a. And the businesses probably get more foot traffic near them. Exactly, because so they're downtown. Have a but, uh, but no, not just to businesses. It's if we get a complaint, that's how we we do do it. So if there are some that you know that are in the way that by a you know that's being used a lot, if you let us know. Yeah, if somebody needs us yeah. to, because there's you know be school children too that. Yeah. Right, and and well, all of those side usually side. we'll get those complaints right away, and we'll make some phone calls to see. Did you have a question? Yes, Madam Mayor. I've, <clears throat> I've been approached by three different people. I want I want to get two questions answered per pertaining to the street department. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, it's about the street. It's about 7th Street. 7th Street. 
Last year in July and August, our street committee worked on plans with Tony Deaver to engineer a design for the 7th Street Corridor for the city to apply for a TA grant. The council discussed this at meetings on July the 23rd and August the 13th. Then on August the 27th, the council unanimously passed a resolution of support for the Broadway Street and Rail Bay Corridor Improvements Project in Marysville. This was a unanimous decision by the council. Then, in the weekly council highlights on February 8, 2019, it states, location for new water shop we have been working on on the logistics or possibly using the property of 7th and Calhoun for the location of a new water shop. On February the 12th, 2019, the city administrator sent out an email stating, the water crew has laid out where the new water shop could go at 7th and Calhoun. Obviously, someone decided to present plans for a new water shop to be located in the 7th Street Corridor. Using the street corridor has never been discussed by the council in open session. The public would have no way of knowing about these plans for a large building to be erected in the 7th Street Corridor instead of us following through with the street, bike trail, and parking as planned in our TA grant resolution. Now my two questions are that I was asked and I'm concerned about is number one, who had the authority to override the city resolution of support for the TA grant project without a council vote? Since no dis binding decision was ever made, we're not building, no council decision has been made. We just looked at it. There's no decision. All right. So nothing's been overridden. That's good, good enough for my answer. But my second question is, when did this get decided? We talked about the location last meeting, but you weren't here, Terry. No, I watched the meeting. That wasn't what we talked about. It wasn't talked about at the last meeting. I we watched the whole meeting. We talked about putting cones out, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, and I talked about there. improving Calhoun Street being part of a, an overall project to improve that area as well. Mm -hmm. There is no record in the minutes or anything about talking about this any place. That's not fair to the public. This decision wasn't made in the council. No decision has been made. Decision has been made. Measured it out. One, wait, one, one, uh, one conversation at a time, please. Technically, no decision has been made. I have. The only thing that's in the minutes on page five is Mayor Grun questioned the aesthetics of placing a building at 7th and Calhoun, and CA St. John reported the building would fit in the space. CM Fry reported. Where was this? Where was this taking place in the minutes? Yeah, in the yes. minutes. In your minutes. Of which meeting? The last From meeting. the last meeting. The one that you were missed, Terry. Okay, this all happened before that meeting. I don't have the minutes from the previous meeting. I do. Do you? do? Okay. Are they referenced? Is there any reference to it? I don't know.
this would have been. Wait, what meeting was, what date was that on? This is the last meeting. This is the last meeting. What date, meeting. what date was that? The 20, or the. It had to be the yeah, meeting. February, what, February What day did my email come out? This was in February the 8th, was when you, you present, you told people about this. Okay. So what decision are you having? There's no actual vote on building a building there. It doesn't matter about the vote. It's a matter about the public being notified about this happening. But nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Discussing it is them being notified that we're discussing it. Discussing that we're discussing. No decisions have been made. Where did the idea materialize at? That's the question I was look, asked. Look. I mean, there's several sites that we're interested or looking at to mm -hmm. put a street shop. Some of them are on properties the city owns. Others are properties that we would have to buy from somebody. Right. And then we get into the, we can't discuss openly That's the ones that we might have to purchase. Right. And I think the thinking was that this we need to look at all the sites, figure out which ones even are viable or not. and have an idea of what infrastructure we would need to put into these sites we have an, a comparison cost wise of what the different sites are going to cost us and i think the mayor mentioned and maybe several minutes meetings ago of that we own already own that property yeah i, I know i remember that that, uh -huh. that site I don't remember was how long ago yeah. it was i don't remember any place in open session where it was suggested that we would do it on 7th and Calhoun. If we, you we can discussed show me that, it's fine. Th I believe Todd I'm sure I discussed it. it. I know it was in an open meeting. I don't remember which meeting. It's been a few meetings back. Yeah. It was one of them where we were talking about January. It. Yeah, it's been a while back. But and I do then plus the last meeting that. we discussed yeah. it. Yeah, it's been discussed. I mean, I don't remember if we ever discussed actually, you know, when it got discussed coning it out. But I know we've discussed that site before. Is, is one of them. Well, we've got all the tapes to watch, and it, it isn't on any of the tapes. I, I'm sure that Todd brought that up at one of the meetings. I couldn't tell you which one, but I remember it being brought up. It's well, been brought up a few times, that site. Well, the only place I can figure out that it might have been talked about was in a closed session when I was excluded. That's the only you place it could have been talked about. From that meeting, I believe. Yeah. Recusal and, and exclusion are not the same That's thing. not the same thing. It, we, yeah. You recused yourself from that meeting. Just want the answer, that's all. Well, I'm telling you the answer is best I remember it is that we've looked at a few sites and I, I'll tell you right now, I'm I'm not a big fan of that location, but it was brought up and I don't have a problem with looking into it and seeing if it will fit or not. If it saves the city it, uh, money, I'm all for it too. What I'm not for is that the wasn't done in public meeting to make this decision. It didn't have to be. But, but no decision's been made. No, Terry, we, can, we know nobody no. made a decision. No, wait, one at a time, please. That's the thing is no decision's been made. That we're, we're discussing it. That's not a, a discussion is not a decision. I understand that. So, I mean, that's, we are in the public discussing it. So, b before any decision, because we want the public to be involved if there is a decision to be made, but we have not made a decision. We advertised a resolution of support that we were going to do this for the trail and the and the depot, right. and it was going to be for parking. Nobody ever said anything about doing something different with it. Well, we're, we and also before that just a moment. Go ahead. Yes. Before Sorry. that, we hadn't even got. I don't believe we hadn't even got. The decision back that the TA grant wasn't going to help on the Seventh Street. You, the decision was made to, for this idea to put it there, was done before we even knew we were rejected on the north end of the TA grant. Because we could, we didn't decide to take the TA grant yet. It's only a discussion too. We decided to apply for it, but we didn't decide to take it until a final decision is made. We have ultimate right to change our minds and do something different because we haven't made a, a contractual decision. Okay. In the same way, we decided to build a fire station on the property next to Kramer Oil, but now we're talking about possibly selling it for something else because we didn't decide to build one. We supported the idea of building one. That, to me, that's the, the distinction. 
don't know if anybody else feels different. In other words, there was never talk about an open discussion, in an open session. We are I, at about one it. time. I did bring up, and it wasn't this last meeting that I passed this around. Yes, yes. The parking and That's everything why it's on this parking. Yep. Nothing so, about a new building going there. Yeah, it's in the. Well, when, when you mentioned it, when when I passed this out, I I pointed out that this is what the TA what at they at which meeting Carl last, last meeting. meeting. Okay. I, it's when I, passed, I wasn't at that meeting. It was, so when I passed this out at the last meeting, I said, you know that when they're talking about the water and sewer building, I said, you're changing what we um, initially designed. And no one had a problem with that. Um, at the last meeting, we would have known that we did not have the TA grant for that. <coughs> because this was dated January 30th. So, and we discussed the TA grant last meeting. Mm -hmm. So on February 11th, we knew we didn't have it. Mm. So, but I mean, so going back to this note, uh, so we know we don't have the TA grant for this. Um, we haven't discussed, we haven't made a decision on putting the building there, and we haven't. Um, um, I watched the meeting last night when uh, Mark Hoffman was talking, and he told the whole council that they were really looking so excited about July maybe having the thing done and that the depot maybe being a trailhead and parking and everything. I watched, I didn't see anybody tell him, well, there's going to be a little short of parking place because we're considering putting the building where you think there's going to be some parking. Nobody told all We that. might not have mentioned it. Then. All of the discussion no, it was later about in the on Hedrix and Calhoun and Carolina and Alston was where we were talking about parking, not on the rock, not on the old right of way, but rather on all the surface streets in the area. Furthermore, I visited with Mark Hoffman at multiple times about this, and the trail group is aware of us discussing the water shop. And there is lots of parking. But yeah, in that sure. area, lots of parking. Just Hedrix now. alone probably has 50 spots. I mean, it's a lot, more than you'd think. And it's lined out. It is painted. Oh, he I hope they're that. satisfied with your answer. That's all I had to say about it. Okay. All right. Oh, I got one thing else on the street. Yes. I had some of the, I guess you want to call them apartment owners over here on the highway side, ask me where the, they would need to park on a day <laughs> for snow removal. Well, <laughs> would, they, would they have to park at Helvering parking lot? I'm just throwing that out. I, I don't know. That's why I said Is I would park, park on the highway. Clear? The ones that park here on the highway and on Ninth Street uh -huh. and on Broadway around the front. You know, when we declare an emergency snow, like we are, and we're trying to get it cleaned up, mm -hmm. you know, the crews just go in and out and do the best they can. Uh -huh. They asked me where the city would like them to park. This isn't the best answer, but a primary route uh, that's closest to them would be the next best. If they get it off, uh, off, off our highways, route. if they get off our highways, or so get we off, can get them clean. Get them clean. Get them off the emergency. Then go routes. from emergency to a primary route. Right. I guess it, that's the answer. It's not. It's that's the next best. If they're cl trying to close park as close to their property or wherever they live as I possible. I guess you know they could park over here at this behind the church. Of course, every time they do that, when our guys come to try to clean those parking lots, then yeah. That's I mean, just like the well, I'm just saying on too. an overnight right. thing. Yeah. Sure, right. I mean, no. if you're trying to clear them for the overnight. Yeah, for the overnight was right. what they were concerned about. Because they clear 8th and 9th. Right. That's tough. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the highway. And the highway and Broadway. Yeah. That cut out, they've talked about that up against the Kester Museum, you know, where the angle parking is. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of the people who live along there asked, can I park there? And we told them yes. Yeah. Because that is off-street parking. That is not... Our guys do clean it, but they don't have to. You know where I'm talking yeah. about? That that's along 10th Street. Yeah. On the west side. That get them off the street. That gets them off the street on the highway coming through, and that's off street parking. That's two blocks up. Well, it's one block from several of those who are right there on that 10th Street right corner. You're talking right on on the west side of Highway 77. Yes. Because that's off street. That's cut out. That that's angle. angle. That yeah. angle is fine to park on. Because technically, we're not. We, we don't, don't clear we angles. We shouldn't, but they do. 
But yeah, technically no. Well, that would be close for the people between eighth right. and ninth. And they and have that's, asked. That get yeah, off, those are the that ones that ask. The they they get, get them off the routes. They get them off the routes. Yes. And they did ask, and we told them yes. But they all entered their apartments on the back on side. On the back on side the here on seven seven. Yeah. Well, and some of them on that's Broadway. Them, no. A that's couple of them yeah. entered yeah. from the front. Yeah. 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 That's know. the closest. That's the closest spot they could probably get. That's but it off is kind of bad for the people who live around Eighth and Broadway. Right. Well, Eighth and Broadway, I'd have them park over here. Yeah, yeah, which would probably be smarter in right this there. one. That's two blocks for them that way. Madam Some Mayor, people. why can't they park down in the swimming pool parking lot? Well, they could, they but could. that's two blocks. That's, that's well, much farther away. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, we, yeah. you know, we make all these routes, and then we say we don't. We need to figure out how to accommodate these people. Yeah. Some of them are not younger folks, too. And right. Some have little or children or trying to carry things. I mean, it's, yeah. it's yeah. a lot they of... They have groceries, too. It's, it's more than in one think. day. Yeah. 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 Not, not permanent. Right. So, right. Yeah. so, like I said, I was just asked. I said, so, now I, you know. I, the, um, I just bring it here and well, find out. Well, it's good to know <laughs> that. West Side Angle Parking by the, uh, by the museum, yeah. they can park. And then over here would be the next, second best. I think yeah. some people, too, park um, east of the movie theater on 9th Street North. Oh, I've sure. seen some people park there who park yeah. normally along the highway. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. I never thought. Of that. I thought we're, I not thought Ninth well was a primary. There. That Ninth is a primary route all the way yes. through town. It is, but I noticed that some of them but will there is shuffle there. parking. There is there not? There is, but yeah. it's yeah. not as one, wide a street as pickup yeah. highway. It's not right. moved and it's not clear up to the <laughs> clear up to the curb. It sticks out quite <laughs> yeah. a bit. Yeah, sticks out. Yeah. Been there three snows. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Water wastewater, parks rec, cemetery airport, <coughs> police fire. I want to say thank you to the fire department for putting the lines in for the wash, new washing machine for the fire department. Did somebody, Did I miss somebody? Did you have something else? Cemetery uh, airport. Did you find anything what happened with that uh, one hanger? <coughs> you know, we were missing a hanger and you were going to check it's on that. The, it's the one that was where, where the Lando parking lot when it was expanded. I don't know why it's Long still time listed, but it's... That is yeah, the one that just, was demoed. Yeah, they just I have found an old map. Had the number there. They just okay. It's part of the parking lot. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's where it the parking is lot the parking is lot. Now. <laughs> is there Chief. a door going to be put on that one hanger? Is, is that the, Landall's hanger? Yeah, the one on the farthest southwest corner. Yeah. I didn't know who owned it, but there's a steel it's a and builders, hanger. doors, and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, there was missing one door now. It's missing both. Yeah, the whole sides are gone. Yeah, it looks like it'll follow down in a stiff breeze. I don't know what. The on that hangar, that specific yeah, hangar? Southwest, southwest corner, hangar, I can't remember the number. Southwest okay. It's the oh. one nearest the Landall parking lot in the okay. back row. Did you have something, Chief? I do. I got a couple things. Uh, first thing is, the uh, city gave me the brochure that's going to be used for the ATVs, or no, sorry, the UTVs and stuff starting April 1. And on our checklist and stuff, we're looking at tail lamps. It's plural. Now, I know that uh, uh, there's manufacturers that have two turn signals, but they have one big stop mm -hmm. in the back it's not two just one is that going to be acceptable to you so guys? you need to we need to put the s in brackets well they're already made we'll just write see if we there's can a space for notes made. over here we can just write there is an operational braking line uh, okay. just one yeah if you just put one. just one in there, there, like, then we know i don't forget what the brand it is it's right in the middle and it's about this big okay but the turn signals are down well low. we haven't seen that the council hasn't seen that little brochure that you have. This is what we have made. It's just simple. So we have these made. This we do our inspections on. Oh, I meant that that yeah, other. Like we haven't seen a form that either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is what, we're having a meeting with all all the officers since we have to do the inspections. Um, because a, the reason I'm asking something that simple is because of the seatbelts. ATV or the UTVs. I understand. But your micro utility trucks, a lot of them pre manufactured a long time ago, only have lap belts. They weren't manufactured with crossovers, just like antique cars. Are you going to accept those, or are they going to have to drill holes in their vehicles and try to bolt in a crossover belt? So you're saying if it's factory made that way? Yeah, it's like the state of Kansas uses certain vehicles prior to what, 71 or something, what it was, only came with lap belts. Mm -hmm. They don't mm -hmm. have crossover belts. Are we going to consider the same thing with these micro utility trucks? Yeah, I think I would two, assume two, two points fine. And yeah. yeah, it doesn't have to be an aftermarket three point harness installed. That, that would be a works lot fine of work. with me. If that's the way it's on here, I just want to make sure that we're good with that and I don't send something over here to City Hall in for it. 
So you created this, or you found a sample from Cindy someone? Did. I Cindy did. created it. I took it straight off minute. your um, ordinance. ordinance, what you people said you had to have, yeah. and you said three-point yeah. ordinance. Yeah. Not yeah. just lap belt. So and I understand that the UTVs, like Terry, yeah. they you come you on and built into them. Start calling but the price, you might be the older trucks, the older ones that won't have them. Personally, yeah. I wouldn't want to ride it on a UTV without one. <laughs> too easy to take <laughs> That's why we made a thing for notes. So uh, place I'd be curious if you're talking about that lap belt instead of the. Mm -hmm. uh, what about a factory vehicle? that doesn't have turn signals, we always have a hand signal that we could I use. would agree with you on that. That kind of surprised me when I saw that voted on. Because even motorcycles, you can use hand signals, or your car, you right. can use hand signals if you want. I thought that was excessive to put that you're, in there. You're, what you're doing, you just take a brand new vehicle and you're causing somebody to drill holes in a brand new vehicle to just to, and rewire something that didn't come with it. There's there's magnetic turn signals, and there's clamp-on <laughs> turn signals. I think if you spend on a brand new UTV that you're not going to want to... But here's the thing. My thought on that is that I know of at least two accidents that happen because people don't know what a hand signal is. They don't... I mean, yes, they teach it in driver's ed, but go quiz. 18-year-olds or 30-year-olds, you're probably not going to get a lot that even know what it means. Whereas everybody knows what a blinking light on one side means, sure. I think. I hope. I hope. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> yeah, it's, Pull their license if they hey, don't. you're talking to the guy here that was, that was against the ordinance. So, I mean, because yeah. I remember um, one gentleman alone lost his life because right. of it. That's, That's one of mine. But if we're going to do it, I just want to make sure we have it lined out for everybody the same thing. Will you um, send that to everybody? The, that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we can read through it? it? Like I say, she took it right out of the ordinance, so it exactly shouldn't need any changes, but you can definitely look at it. That's cool. She's had them out. We'll also have a stack them at the PD when we do the inspections as well. And we'll either pass or fail them. You want to go ahead and take a copy of that too, just so we can see it? Yeah. Since we're, we're not studying it right now, but we understand <laughs> yeah. your concern. Yeah. Yeah. So the harnesses make sense. If the seatbelt is what was standard, will you go with that? And the tail lamps, if that's what was standard, we'll go with that. Which means whatever the manufacturer made standard when they manufactured that vehicle. Okay. But turn signals, I but turn signals we kind of want. Is yeah, that what that our final answer? Is? I'm more concerned. I don't. You can buy turn signal kits if you want. It's like a golf cart. They don't come with them, but you can add them later if you want. It's just a kit. It just all depends on you guys what you decide. Then we have to change the ordinance because that's what you passed. I think we order. decided on it when we mm -hmm. when we made it. The okay. turn signals? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah. My, my whole consideration was the lap belt and the stop signal. Because I know there's some brand new that there's only one. Okay. So we'll take your judgment call there. <laughs> um, one other thing I want to talk about that's kinda kinda sensitive maybe I guess. Um, Austin and I have been talking, there were some things that was brought to to Austin about my agency or me. And because it's brought by the council, he didn't he didn't understand what it is. I've uh, I have too much power. I, I guess I need an explanation for that. If it's something I need to fix to make sure Austin doesn't take heat for something that we've done. Um, I've been receiving phone calls. Um, started last fall. Um, there's a council person that's going into businesses talking about my agency and not in a good way. And even gave me the nickname Rambo. I would have gladly have talked about this inside of executive session, but because there's, it's your elected officials, we can't do that. Um, I just want to quit. We try hard to be a professional agency. Um, our equipment, we always make sure it's nice looking for the city. We train well, everything. But now I know we're questioning sometimes because we go outside the city limits and wondering why. But when a council person walks into the Blue Valley and says, starts screaming about why the police officers think they need to be outside of the city limits, there's reasons. We don't cruise outside the city for no reason. It's either for an accident or helping taking a call. It's usually life safety or something. We do have agreements with the sheriff for we help assist so far out or if there's nobody on duty. That way we don't pay housing prisoners. We do pay medical, but we don't pay for dispatch. You know, there's certain agencies that, I, that I've spoke with in Kansas, they'll pay anywhere from $30,000 to $100,000 a year for dispatch and jail services. We pay nothing. 
the way the sheriff looks at it, it's our tax money paying for it anyway. And if we can help outside the city, just around a certain area, we do when we can. We back up, and they back us up in town as well. But the comments about me personally, I take offense. April 18th, I'll be chief 20 years. And we have strived hard in our training, our recognition, um, leadership, everything. And to have somebody call me Rambo because they, I go off the, I don't know, I, I guarantee you, I do not look like Sylvester Stallone in Rambo, I promise you that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but we are expected as department heads to respect counsel, especially when we're in public. Neither department heads would like to just to see the same thing. If there is an issue, then it goes to Austin, Austin brings it to us. Um, there's, I don't understand that. And Mr. Schroeder, I don't know why those were said. Um, well, I, I, the, to remember, I don't remember us specifically ever saying something about too much power. So, and and I have no, we have never said. Well, that, that kind of got me. I'm going power. I have the same power I had 20 years ago when I got. So, uh, so I you know, just to <laughs> clarify that, so uh, that has not been the discussion well the, well, the one thing he i would talk to austin about was today it was brought to him about when i'm gone um professional development professional days. development yeah um i have not joined any more committees because was it two years ago we all had to submit lists of committees and boards we sit on i've actually dropped off some um i've not gained it at all now the one that does take probably the most time and it's here and there and we're talking a day or two is my IMT, incident management team. And that was approved clear back in 2007 because we all train together across the state and if something happens, we all converge and take care of it. Same thing would happen if something happened in Marysville. That's the only thing that's really changed. We just lost our executive director as you guys lost your uh, chamber of commerce person for our chiefs association. Now we did have an emergency meeting the other day because be honest with you, the state association, it's, it's, it's a pretty pretty big hit for us. and uh, But that'll be taken care of soon. We shouldn't have to meet again now. So. Can we hire that person for the chamber? That we're well, not no, no, no. We, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, be all Just right. kidding. We, we, don't, we don't have any authority at the chamber. It's, it's fine, right? I, I sit on, I've sat on the chief's board. And I'm the longest ranking chief on that board. Not many chiefs have been chiefs for this many years. And uh, it's, I find it as a compliment. <clears throat> when the governor's office calls and asks if I say or KBI calls and I want to sit on we're doing a hiring board because we want to hire these new uh, administrators it's a compliment now am I at office yeah it's usually somebody administrates is always here it's either me Dave or one of the two corporals and me and Dave always have to have a phone with us I mean I've always got my phone with me that's why I publish the number on my business cards I mean that doesn't bother me but if there's truly an issue it's then I'd really like to hear it from the whole council of if, if, if there's a problem with my professional development or is there a certain area that you want me working on that I'm not, and if I'm concentrating too much on one. I think professional development is just <coughs> knowing how many days in total you're away from the office. That's all it is. I think it was just, and it wasn't just you, it was everybody sure. trying to figure out that it was balanced throughout the department. Well, see, like some of my training you know, it, it, my, my department's so different than the rest of the departments. We have to have a minimum 40 hours training a year for the police department. That's by statute. Um, and it ranges in our officers anywhere from 40 to even 100 because it depends. You know, sometimes there's a, there's a specific interview class we use by called READ, and it's not always available here. But So when it comes available, we send them. But it's, it's, we're very picky who we send to it. We try to get everybody eventually because it's a $600 class. But it is the premier that teaches you how to interview people. Um, but if somebody has their 40 hours or 50 hours, and all of a sudden that class comes available, I'm going to find it. As long as it's in our budget, we're going to find a way to send them. The same thing with me, but all of my time out of the office isn't always for training. It could be uh, just a meeting. But Austin knows when I'm going to be gone. And that's kind of who, that's who I report to, and he knows when I'm gone, he knows when I'm training. Now, training for my department, by job description, is set by me. Now, if I'm going to say I want to train out of state or if I want to send somebody else out of state, I bring it to Austin. Even if it's just Beatrice, Nebraska or Lincoln, Nebraska, which is closer to me sending somebody clear out to Dodge City. But because of the 
of it sounding like it's big because it's out of state, I want Austin to know that. No, it's only 674 miles away in Lincoln. It's not. Well, maybe that information just needs to be communicated. Yeah, the, the that's council. why I came to council. I mean, especially with, with the council person. Some things like we can't talk about executive session. Like, let's, let's do this. I've always had a great relationship with council. I wouldn't have been here almost 20 years. You know, and I would like to keep that relationship going. You know, we try to keep a professional department and try to keep our officers. That's getting harder over time, but we do what we can to make sure they got good equipment and a good, good place to work. So, but I would just like to agree with that we <laughs> we start treating each other a little more respect. And I have no issue with that at all because to me, if I would sit there and start going off about someone in public, I'm quite certain it would come right back to you pretty quick. And that wouldn't be very professional to me at all. I appreciate that. So, but and we'll try to pay you the same courtesy right. always. I think we can have a few nods here. That would be great. So, anything else? I'll be back in my chair. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Okay. So, again, the firefighters put up the uh, they put the line in for the washer. So, thank you, firefighters, specifically. Land, not land, lattice plumbing came in and helped. So thank you for doing that. And it's exciting that they can now wash their uniforms and not take them home. Um, the only other thing I wanted to bring up was um, about this economic development plan with Jennifer Duffy leaving. Um, I stopped by and talked to Patty Holly about concerns I had that we um, need more information. We need to be in the loop. We need to break down of expenses. Um, we need to know when people are in, in town. And uh, Patty Holly assured me that um, they would uh, keep us in the loop, give us more information, and um, just go onward with that. You guys have any questions about that? But um, I was so shocked. I, I didn't know Jennifer was leaving. So I was like, so I went to Patty Holly like the day after the paper was out. Okay. So I did request a breakdown of the $41,000 that we discussed because I don't think we ever really received that. So hopefully we can get that from them so we know what that's going to. I know that's kind of the back around doing it, but we'll do it now if nothing else. And that is all I uh, had. Mayor, I, I can't remember if I read it in the paper or where I read it that there was one part <coughs> that was mentioned um, that that there was a study about um, the, the depot and I didn't realize that that was going to be part of the study. Yeah, I asked Patty about that because in, in this document it said site planning concepts for Main Street. It said Main Street. I didn't mm -hmm. think it was for the UP depot. So I asked her to look into that give us more information so all right so whatever I find out from her regarding those I will be sure to send it to you um, that's all I have understanding committees um, I don't have any appointments uh, city attorney do you have anything to add no okay on round table discussion first our condolences to Bill uh, O'Borney um, he was a very kind, selfless man, and he'll be missed in our community. Uh, Bill Hoborny? I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he was a good man. I only yeah. knew him for 11 years, but a uh, very good man. Uh, not take, didn't take any accolades and did a lot of work. Um, Diane's birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday, Diane. Um, I did go to a partnership for growth meeting, board meeting. Um, they are, they were emphasizing, uh, they have a very committed board. Um, they're planning a fundraiser. Uh, they're, they talked a lot about grant writing, having a workshop, um, some housing, hopefully getting some additional workers into the area in, in, as a process of that. And, um, so, I, I mean, you can tell that they're thinking, working hard. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And um, so I was glad to have opportunity to go there. A couple quick things. Um, there was There's a House bill about recording of meetings, um, all public subject to coma. 
Uh, it, it hasn't gone to be voted yet, but it's your audio video within 24 hours of the meeting. And so the public bodies would be the school board, Marshall County, and obviously us. So we are ahead of that game because we have ours <laughs> within the 24 hours. We, so. are, we are not ahead of that game because it would include things like committee meetings. I wonder. Yeah. All committee All meetings, committee, library board, everything. 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 Every, every one and subject to come up, we'd have to tape everything. And then we don't know how long we have to keep it or where. Or I read that, that yeah. they didn't yeah, know. That's yeah. the big but we're in a better and place how? than most people. We're, it, but we, we have more committees start. than most really? people. Yes. Just, yeah. just another unfunded mandate. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But it hasn't gone anywhere. But anyway, I just thought that yep. um, the other thing um, that I thought was interesting was on the House bills, it said that. Um, and it's gone through the House Committee, requiring state agency responsible for, for awarding economic development incentives to document tax breaks on a website available to the public and performance review by the Legislative Auditing Division. And it said Kansas was one of the few states cloaked in secrecy, and it'll show the success or the failures of the incentives. And the last time we, vo time we voted on an incentive, which you were on, I was on council, you were on council with me, my concern was, there's no, there's no follow-up. Right. There's no way they to do a cost-benefit analysis, and then it ends. And, yeah. and so I was glad to see that Kansas, and it was kind of interesting to think Kansas was behind, is, is one of the few that don't do that. Not just throwing incentives out and hoping they work. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be good because it's always going to show that it came to fruition sure. rather than it didn't produce anything. And then also there was an article here that I thought applied to us. And I'm going to read it real quick. It was from the Topeka Planning Commission, and it was talking about cell towers. And uh, it says the Planning Commission chairwoman said federal law bans local governments from restricting the placement of telecommunications equipment, such as cell towers and antennas, based on health and environmental concerns. Those are the same discussions we had. So um, that was the Topeka Planning Commission. So the key thing is everybody, no matter how big or small we are, we're all dealing with the same thing. Uh, so those are the only things I wanted to share regarding that. All right, Darlene. Well, a big uh, thank you to the uh, city crews for clearing off all the snow and never having a weekend off and <laughs> sounded like it's gonna <laughs> snow again this coming weekend. Is it and supposed to predict it again? Mm -hmm. Most of us can be north of the way they're talking now. Okay. That's good. good. And then um, <laughs> Stay there. back to Bill O'Borney. Um, he was a, over a 40-year member of Rotary, and he and his wife started the Toys for Tots. And Marley O'Borney, you know, ramrodded it for many, many years. And I didn't and know her, played, so. They did a great job. 81? 1981. 1981. A good soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Darlene? No. Gina? Thanks to the crews and the first responders for having to be out in all that snow when everybody else was... Tucked away, watching yeah. it snow. Yeah. Terry? No. Todd? I just want to throw in two cents on Bill Borney, too. I mean, you know, he was always, well, what can I do to help even you know, help load trucks and things, and you kind of thought, well, you know, it's icy or it's crummy, it's raining. It's, nope, he was always the first one there. And, and no he, attention for no. it. Oh, just no. Just in the back. He was, no, he wasn't seeking glory. He was doing it for all the right reasons. Oh, he man. was also a long time a great man. superintendent of schools. Mm -hmm. That's right. why he came here. And there's Where did he go? This weekend. This weekend? Yeah. Friday. Yeah. Friday. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Oh, heck. Yeah. The 15th. No, there's, a, there's a lot of form staff and former staff, I think, at the school who really felt steered by him and said he was always a great superintendent to work for. And you I don't bet get he that was. with every superintendent. Based, based on the man that he was and yes. I knew him as retired, oh, yeah. I bet he was a great superintendent. So. Yeah, I imagine so. Um, yep. Only other thing I had, uh, if, I know for a while there were some efforts to do sidewalk improvements downtown. Mm -hmm. Is that just kind of nobody's worrying about it till spring or if there are any current? <laughs> I haven't heard, I don't want to stir the hornet's nest on they that. They haven't but. came back since the last time and I think the council left it at yeah I, I presented what the council said okay. after so last nothing time. new nothing new. okay yeah that's all oh and yes thank you to the street crews although they did uh, put the piles away from the intersections I said look at they did exactly what Todd wanted yeah, although the uh, 
my, my wife asked that maybe they could turn off the backup beeper since you know, the 1.30 the alarm clock is getting a little old. We just want to let everybody you know, know that I we're can, working. I know exactly how long it takes for them to dump a truck because that's how long it takes me to fall asleep before they come back and start beeping again. <laughs> but no, I but appreciate your their work. Cleared. It is clear, so I'm not really complaining. That's it. Diane? I don't have anything. Kevin? Just want to thank Street Crews for the job they did and want to say congratulations to the wrestling, wrestling. yeah mm. for yep. first time for a state awesome. winners yeah. pretty cool That's pretty awesome. team effort team effort yep. team effort. jason just thank the street crews same thing and one last thing our joint meeting is next monday night 5 30 here it's a joint meeting of the town hall and chamber after hours so it would be really great if you all could make it how long do you think that'll last? Just so I know if I should eat beforehand or after. Well, I, we will have some, some oh, light dinner. Here. It'll oh, be a okay. light dinner. Is that what we're saying? Light, light dinner. dinner. Okay, no worries then. I just wanted to make no, sure. No, you didn't want to fake. It'll be like 8.30 <laughs> on my start. I you. would like to say that I know everybody says good job to the street, but the cemetery boys are the ones with the shovels. Cemetery yeah. parks. Anything with a sidewalk. Anything with a sidewalk. Anything with a shovel. Anything that's tough. And our own, you know, Austin, Dave, whatever in front of us. But those other boys, they're okay. out there on the weekends. Thank you to the cemetery crew city. as well. Because yeah. yeah. oh, there's a lot of crews. guys. And yeah. even the water guys help pick up the snow with yeah. the street okay. guys. So it is a combined effort of all of our employees. Okay, Just good so job, you. city okay, crews. Chief, are you out there with the shovel? <laughs> I forgot to buy his shovel. Treacherous, treacherous. Okay, with that being said, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Right. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Get it. Nine ten. Not bad. Not bad. Half time. Half time. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about it. <laughs>